Hey everyone, welcome back to my multi-part series on creating Apex, REST, endpoints in your salesforce.com org. Um, in today's video, we're gonna learn about the basics of how this works. I'm gonna set up a very simple endpoint that we're, we'll be able to hit. And then, um, you know, in, in future videos, we're gonna build out from there. But why would we wanna create our own endpoint? Doesn't Salesforce have its own API? And the answer to that is yes, it does. It has its own API, but those the API, while, while powerful, um, is very generic. It, you, you, the operations are very simple. You can create records, you can insert records, you can query, you can update records, which is great. Uh, but if you work at a company and you have processes that are heavy in, heavy in business logic, maybe there's multiple things that need to happen for a specific event, um, you might not want to trust that business logic with outside teams um, if they're trying to integrate into your Salesforce org. You might want to simplify that for them. Uh, here's an example. So let's say we work for a company that, let's say we work for a company that sells a subscription product, right? And that subscription product can be canceled. Um, if a customer calls in to cancel that subscription product, there's many things that I have to do uh, that the Salesforce org has to do to make sure that that cancellation request is handled properly by the right people. Maybe it has to get routed to an account manager. Maybe there's an alert. Maybe we have different areas, not just on the account, but also maybe on the asset level um, to mark individual products on what's being canceled. There's a lot that could potentially happen in, that, in this example cancellation request. Uh, that's all called business logic. Now, let's fast forward and the, our head engineer at this company says, you know what, we want to initiate, we want to initiate cancellations from our, our, our user, our, our, our application. How do we do that? Well, we could say you can use the Salesforce API using your create, insert, query, and you could follow this set of business logic that we do. Um, they would have to program it, their application, to perform, to perform all the things that we perform on the Salesforce side. Um, that's one way to do it. That's not ideal though, because one, you're, you're entrusting that they're gonna do the right thing. Two, you know, look, if you're a Salesforce developer, you know how these how fast business logic can change. Um, you're, if you have multiple places where this business logic is, it's harder to actually make these cha any changes to it. Um, so for that reason, uh, we'll, we're gonna create a, cancellation endpoint that I'm going to give to this engineering team. And they just have to send me a, a set of data, set of a, an expected piece of data. And then I'm going to have Salesforce handle all the business logic. And in that way, in a year from now, when they're like, hey, this is great. Our cancellation request from the application works. I also want to do it from our website. Great. No problem. You just hit that endpoint in the exact same way you hit it. So like we can take different requests from different parties. And then we could put a lot of business logic behind these, these API endpoints. So that's like one reason why you want to make your own. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I'm going to start by um, making a very simple um, API class and showing you how to actually access that class. So let's get right to it. Uh, again, I'm going to create just something really simple. I just want to show you how to actually get the Apex REST service to communicate with the classes that you're going to be creating. So what we're going to need to do is create a class. I've created a class here called API. And this class, I want this class to be the single class that our Apex REST service um, uses to handle all incoming API requests. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to annotate. Well, first, we're going to change the permissioning of this class. I'm going to make it a global class. And then we're going to add an annotation here. And this annotation is going to be REST resource. The REST resource annotation requires a single parameter called URL mapping. This URL mapping is going to hold a string, which is the path of the API request. So for me, and in this tutorial, I really want to show you eventually how to make a full robust API uh, system. So I'm actually going to set my URL mapping to API slash API slash V1, and then I'm going to add a wildcard in there 
And this wildcard is going to tell Salesforce that it doesn't matter what endpoint we want to throw on the end of this path. Um, this is the class that's going to handle that request. Okay. From here, we're going to create our methods within this class. And these methods are going to handle the requests that are coming in uh, through the REST service. They're following the path that we set up for this REST service. And they're hitting some sort of endpoint that we're going to define later. But I need methods in here to run so that Apex, the Apex REST service knows what to do once it receives this request. So I'm going to create two for now. We're going to make a global static void get request. And then I'm going to create a global static void post request. But before I do that, we need to put an annotations on both of these methods. So you get the first one gets HTTP get, and the second one gets HTTP post for the post request. And again, these annotations really tell Salesforce exactly like, okay, it, it's the end, the API call is hitting following this path. It's hitting this endpoint, and it's a get request. It knows to um, find the method that's in this API class and then fire that method off. Awesome. So now that we have our, our get request method and our post request method, we're going to need a, a way to interact with the with the calls being made into our API service and into our endpoints. So if someone makes a get request or a post request into these endpoints, we'll need a way to understand the information that's coming in from the call and a system where we could actually respond to that API call in a way that makes a lot of sense. Um, luckily, Salesforce gives us a global variable called REST context. REST context is what we're going to be using to interact with the entity or the client that's making the API call. It's also what we're going to use to look at the request that's coming in. You can see here it offers me two sub we call them sub variables or sub properties. I'm not exactly sure. What, or sub classes really is probably the best way to put it. So there's a response class and then there's a request class um, for this call. So let's go ahead and we're going to go right to this response class. Again, what I want to do is really just I'm just setting up a very simple way for you to interact with the um, t for us to actually hit this API. And I can see here that is not how the status code works, but I'm going to set a status code in this response class. And then I'm going to send something back. I'm going to send back a message saying, hey, you you hit this endpoint. You you found this method. Um, and what we're going to say is, uh, let's make it super simple. And I'm just going to have it respond, hello world. So I'm going to say rest context dot response dot response body. Okay, and we're going to set that equal to... Hello world. Now you'll, you'll notice here that my IDE is saying, actually, you can't set this to hello world. And the reason is this response body, the, the data type that it accepts is a is a blob. So I'm going to say blob that value of hello world. So now it does it if so now anyone hitting our endpoint coming in through our URL mapped path of slash API slash V1 slash whatever endpoint we want. We haven't defined any endpoints yet, and that's okay. Um, so as long as it's a get request, it's going to fire this method. This method is going to put a status code of 200, and it should return a, um, should return a string value of hello world. But wait, you're probably saying, well, how do we actually test this? You know, like how do I, I have to make an API call into my... In, into my development environment? Um, and the answer is yes, you do. And to do that, we're gonna use a service called Postman. If you're not familiar with Postman, you should become familiar with Postman. I'm sure there's other services that are similar. I like Postman because it's just the one that I know. Um, but basically, Postman is a way to generate API calls. It's really a simple tool that makes get, post, put, delete requests. You can define them, you can save them. And it makes testing your API really easy. So I'm going to create a new collection here. Call it Salesforce Demo. And then I'm going to create a new uh, get request. And I'm going to call this get request. What am I going to call it here? Hit my endpoint. Because 
Well, I'm super creative. Okay, and now we have to find our F1. We have to call it. So I have to set a, a URL. And I need to get, it, it, well, eventually we want our URL to have the, uh, it should be our Salesforce domain and then services slash Apex REST slash whatever path you set your URL mapping to. So again, we're using the Apex, Apex Rex REST service, which is located um, after the services slash Apex REST slash API slash V1 slash, you know, some endpoint name. So it doesn't matter. And if you're unsure what your domain is, this is how you would get it. Go into your setup, go over to um, this quick find and type in my domain and click my domain. This is important too, because like if you're working in sandboxes, they're gonna be different than your production environment. Um, you'll need a way to actually handle that. So you can grab your domain there. And then I'm gonna throw this right at the front. HTTPS is my domain, slash services, slash Apex rest, and then our URL mapping, and then some weird endpoint there. And I'm going to hit send. And this send is gonna give us a hello world response. And it does not, okay? The error we see here, this is actually a Salesforce error. And what it's saying is, um, you, we don't know who you are. <laughs> it's, that's great that you found this endpoint, but uh, we're gonna need more than that. So this is actually a good thing. It's a 401 unauthorized uh, response. And this is a great point to stop the video and go into our next part of the video, which is gonna be the authentication and how we're gonna actually authenticate so I'll see you over there.